morning welcome to worship it is July 12th 2020 it is a good day to gather together to worship God it has been a beautiful but hot week but still the the sunshine has been out and it has been beautiful so today we're talking about the sower not quilting but planting sower and the good ground and the rocky ground and how that affects our lives and what Jesus has to say to us about that. So we are, are glad to gather together to worship God. So let us now begin to worship Almighty God. Good morning. It's Kathy and my pleasure to lead you in the call to worship. Take this time to focus your mind and heart on God and the redeeming grace and hope God offers us. God's word is being sown in our very lives. Listen, my heart, to God's word this day. Christ's <clears throat> teachings are being scattered and sown at this very time. Open my soul and receive the seeds of Christ's wisdom. The Spirit is here to nourish and strengthen us. Grow my spirit and be fertile ground for a life bearing fruit of Christ's love in all that I say and all that I do. Opening prayer. God of love and grace, you surprise us by your presence. We are surrounded by your blessings. We are strengthened by your encouragement. Open our eyes to your presence here in our worship service. May we have ears to hear your message to us today. May we leave this time ready to serve you as we work to care for others and love you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Even as we are separated physically and in our own homes, we are the church. Take this time to remember and even greet those of our church family and beyond. Take time to email, call, write cards to people, and greet them with genuine affection of Christian love, and pass along the peace of Christ in whatever creative way you might see possible. to confession and prayer of confession. Take this time to look over your last week and notice times when you were not focused on God, times when fear overcame our trust and hope in you. Take this time to acknowledge how much we need God. In our prayer of confession, let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you in prayer. We would rather be in charge of our own lives than to allow you to lead us. We think we know how to find our own way, and we forget to look to you for direction. We wander around being led by so many things. Forgive us when we move away from you. Forgive us when we think we know it all and take off in directions that clearly are not good for us. We begin each day with great intentions, and then we get distracted from your leading. We fall short, and we need your care. We take this time to acknowledge that we need your guidance and mercy. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Each week after the prayer of confession and our call to confession, we are reminded of God's assurance of forgiveness, God's pardon. We are also reminded that it isn't what we do, it is what God does that forgive, allows us to be forgiven. It is not that we've been that great. It is not that we have earned this. It is from the grace and mercy of Almighty God that we are offered this forgiveness. And it is the good news that we find in the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Listen for the word that stands the test of time. Listen for the word that lives and moves among us. Listen for the word that God is speaking to us this day. Good morning. The scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23, the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he, it lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, ma making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear God, may your words be found in these words. Please take what you have for each one of us. Help us to hear what you have for us today so that we might strengthen and deepen and serve you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today we have a parable. It is one of Jesus' parables. I love parables because they're stories. They're not stories we can always understand, but they're stories. 
So Jesus tells us this parable. It's called the parable of the sower. And he's talking about planting seeds and um, where the seeds land. So Jesus has um, moved on in his ministry in this chapter 13 of Matthew. Uh, at the beginning of, the of his ministry, we find him teaching in the synagogue. At this point in ministry, we, we understand that Jesus is very popular, that he, wherever he goes, people follow him around. And this is what was happening in this chapter 13 of Matthew, that people had been following him around and he was trying to get away, trying to get, um, get some rest, get some renewal. And he uh, went outside and he noticed that the people were there. So he moved into um, being on a boat and moved out onto the boat and from the boat he was teaching. So I was thinking about when we are going to go back to worshiping together and I thought you know what maybe we could go to two mile run and get a boat and I could get in a boat and you can all um, space yourselves out there's a visual there's a YouTube YouTube video YouTube video right there so we might not do that but we might so um, this is as usual in Jesus parables is not what people expect when they hear the story it wasn't about God sowing seeds so that Israel could be strong again and everybody would win it's about focusing on um, life and struggles so in this parable Jesus identifies that there, there are many difficulties many difficulties for these little seeds that sometimes they prospered and grew a hundredfold and sometimes they withered and they were strangled and sometimes they grew for a little bit but the soil wasn't deep and so they were shallow roots and they died so he talks about many things that might cause this seed to have trouble and pain and I think it tells us by Jesus story that don't be surprised or discouraged when you come up against the reality that this life journey is difficult. Now I, I love parables because there are a lot of ways that we can read them and sometimes as much of scripture does we can read it when we are young um, in high school and we can read it right after you retire and you get a whole different layer from what you're reading both of which are valid and both of which are from the Holy Spirit it's just different because you're in a different place so what we want to talk about here is the different three different things that Jesus says that these seeds um, fall into and the first is shallow soil rocky soil soil that you can't get your roots to um, get any depth from. The second is a thorny path. Um, if you've been working out in your yard for some amazing uh, reality, the weeds aren't having any trouble with the heat, with no water. They're doing just fine. I have vines that have little hands, little thumb. I think they have opposable thumbs and they grab my bushes and they pull them off to the side so they can kill them when I'm not watching but they grab and wrap their um, their hands around the good bushes and choke them and Jesus talks about the thorns that grow up and choke out the good plants and then he talks about good soil and he mentions that some things that are planted grow and they multiply 30, 60, even 100 fold. So some of the layers I think that we can look at today um, are that God, would, let's try to figure out what it is that God, and this, you're going to come out with different conclusions here because you are each in different places and you may be in a rocky path right now 
you might be in good soil and things are going really well for you or you might be in a time where you can see a little growth but you don't feel much confidence with your root system in that um, okay so let's think about what Jesus was doing he's in an inlet on the water talking about these three different kinds of soils um, in Palestine, there are two ways of sowing seeds. Um, also, let's remember that Jesus is on a boat in, in the water, and as he looks around him, he sees farmland, he sees the rocks, but he may easily have looked over and seen someone in the Palestinian mountain area farming. And he could have easily said, look at the farmer notice what happens sometimes seeds fall on rocky soil sometimes they fall in a place where thorns um, choke them out and sometimes they fall in a place with good soil so jesus spoke this way he he spoke about what people understood he spoke about what people could see so clearly he could easily have been outside in this boat giving this um, teaching and notices that there's a farmer and brings that up. He told stories and they made a difference because it connected to people's lives. So what we could learn some background to this is in Palestine there were at that point two ways of sowing seeds. Um, one way is called broadcasting. So the farmer just takes the seeds and flings it and wherever those seeds land good luck to the seeds. It reminds me when I was a little kid and we put up our Christmas trees and we had tinsel and we had tinsel that was actually like tin foil cut in long strips. Um, I do remember that when I was in college and dating someone who lived in Mount Lebanon and I went to his house for over Christmas and um, they threw their tinsel out. We took every strip of tinsel, put it over a little piece of cardboard and saved it for next year. But the, uh, the point of that story is that when we were putting tinsel on when I was little, we had to put each little strip of tinsel on the tree so that icicles looked like it was um, beautiful. And at the, at the time we got done with the tree, we stood back and looked and we saw this beautiful tree that was mostly covered in tinsel that was hanging. And then we saw like a clump bird nest wad of tinsel about the same height that I was and I had to take it off and try to put it on one at a time but I didn't realize it was a scriptural response and that I was broadcasting the tinsel um, into one big lump on the Christmas tree so anyway first type of sowing the seed is to broadcast and that's throwing it this second one is I love this Second way of planting is a little lazier. It was uh, that you would put a sack of seed on the back of a donkey, or maybe two sacks over, over top of the donkey, cut a hole in the sack, and then walk the donkey up and down the path. Isn't that great? Um, who knows how that works? One of the things that I learned about fields in the first century Palestine, Middle East, were that they were long and narrow and that often the only way you can travel is to just walk right through some of these fields and so we look at this as sometimes the seed Jesus said the seed some seeds fell among the pathway and that would be here long narrow strips of planted seeds and the only way to get through the field is to kind of just walk right through it and that was what he was talking about. Sometimes they fall on the pathway, and the pathway is there so you can just get from one place to another. Um, so he mentions these three different kinds of places, the rocky ground. Um, most of Palestine is rocky ground. It's limestone, a shelf of limestone with a little bit of topsoil on some of it. Uh, it's not real conducive to establishing deep roots so that it can get some water. If you're really on rocky ground, that's part of the problem that you can't get, the plant can't get water. 
can't sustain the water. The thorny ground was uh, looked good for a while and then it was deceptive because something reached out and choked the healthy plants. Um, the layers in this parable are very interesting and we can look at it from a number of different perspectives. Today I was looking at this with the idea that we have those kinds of soils and experiences in life that sometimes it seems like our life is in a rut that we might be on a pathway and we don't even know it we don't even know there's seeds there because we're just walking back and forth um, maybe that is is a place where you're feeling you are right now it feels as if you're just moving through the day that there isn't any joy or isn't any interest nothing's growing and that you're not learning and that it's just routine it may be that you are on a pathway kind of soil so how about the rocky places sometimes we're in rocky places and it's just not enough soil to allow us to grow it's just very hard it doesn't allow water um, nurturing to to keep you sustained it's very difficult to stay healthy sometimes when you are in a rocky soil time in your life and you can't pray because you're just too tired or too discouraged that is when the great cloud of witnesses comes into practice that is when the church steps up and prays for you and we do that we have names of people that we have been praying for each of you do that with people in your lives who you know need prayer so in this worshiping community know that you are being prayed for that you are being cared for that when you are in a, a rocky time and can't pray yourself that others are praying for you and that is the the blessing of being in a in a Christian community in a community and that can be around the world who care for you and pray for you sometimes the thorny parts remind me of times when you think everything is okay and you think it's safe and you go out and something grabs you this is kind of a time where you're not sure where the thorns are i think that we've had some between the COVID-19 and the race um, discussions and the heat and the, the fear of um, your job being in jeopardy, the fear of schools, are they going to open, are they not going to open, how do we do that? You who are teachers, um, I know that is a time of concern. I know that you who are parents or grandparents, it is a time of concern. It's a time where it feels like something might be just about to grab us. And that is very difficult. If that is a time that you're walking in right now, name it. And then we can figure out what do we do about that then? How do we, um, how do we trust that God is in control? And, and what do we do to assure that we're doing everything to protect others from getting sick? We're doing everything to encourage those who might have to work twice as hard to do their job because it's completely new, like any teacher that goes back to school or people who work in hospitals, people who do um, who wait people who help us with meals. Um, it is a difficult time and it may be that Jesus is reminding us that those times happen and then we can figure out what do we do to move through those times I think it's important to notice what soil you're in right now because uh, my my daughter was just saying that she needs to get back to walking she's been doing a lot of projects around the house and her house looks fabulous but she hasn't had her daily walking and she was saying that that's an important thing or or you get kind of depressed so it's important to know 
how you can care for yourself in, and you know that you need special care when you are in a rocky time, when you are in a time where thorns are around you. Um, make sure that you're getting more enough sleep, try to eat right, try to notice um, times when God is present in each day. Those might be things we can do as we go through different soils of our lives. Another part of what I think Jesus might be talking about here is the good soil. And how can we how can we be in good soil? Sometimes I've been repotting things, re removing things and moving them to different parts of the yard. If it's too sunny, I'll move it over to a shaded time. Sometimes it just needs to change the soil. Sometimes for succulents, they don't need a rich soil, they need a rocky soil. So some people do better at times of challenge. So how can we help um, our community so that we can have good soil? How can we be the encouragers? How can we help provide good soil for those who don't have a chance, who get choked out every time they turn around, or who have rocky uh, root systems. How can we help be a part of the good soil? So, um, and that takes a long time. Sometimes we don't see the response. If you are talking about a tree that is very strong, an oak tree, it takes years to develop an oak tree. But once it's developed, there you can't push it over. So, sometimes it takes long energy and long investment in helping others to have good soil. So let's uh, take what you get from this passage. Um, listen to what Jesus is saying to you about this, this parable of the sower. Um, replant what you need to replant in your life. Notice times that God gives you nurturing water and sunshine. Notice times when we are in the shade and we're not um, exposed to the heat of the day. So all of those things, I think, are things to think about this week. I think they were things to think about the first century when Jesus was talking about this from a, a boat. And um, notice that. Notice things that you can do to reach out for others. And know that God is with you, that whatever soil you are going through right now that there is something you can learn uh, some ways that you can grow and that it may be that you just need to get through it because the next um, next time of growth might be better so let's encourage I want to encourage each of you to pay attention to where you see God's hand in your life. I want to encourage each of you to pay attention to where you can help enrich someone else's soil. So think about what kind of soil you are in right now in your life. Uh, what ways you might be strengthened by Christ, knowing that Christ is with you, whether it be a rocky time or a time of thorns or even a time of prosperity. And also, as we move from this time of worship and we take the message of strength from Jesus, let's notice where we can help provide good soil. Let's notice opportunities that we have to be the voice for those who have no voice, to be the voice of justice to make the soil good for those who have no chance ways that we can be the voice of acceptance ways that we can be the voice of hope and encouragement and basically ways that we can be the voice of christ amen Take this quiet time to pray in your home. Write names of people to pray for during the next week. Please remember people from the congregation who are sick or struggling. 
Remember to thank God for all that we have and pray for those having a difficult time in life right now. We continue to pray for Wendell Sowers and Don Weaver, for Frank and for JR. We pray for Zach and Allie and their new baby coming, as well as Megan and Nate Carl and their new baby coming. We remember to pray for essential workers, families, our country, those with illness, those struggling with economic challenges, people who feel afraid and alone, the helpers, the church in the world, those in our church family who are struggling, people who feel left out, those who are discouraged and disenfranchised. Help them to know you are strength and hope. People giving out Christ's call to serve and care for others as we move into the world with God's message of care and love. Take time to thank God for the many blessings in your life. Ties and Offering your offering envelope has the church address, 215 East Bissell Avenue, on each envelope. Please put a stamp on it and mail it to the church. Your offering is a blessing and is important to the well-being of the church. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you with a spirit of gratitude for all that we have received. We strive to live each day with an attitude of thankfulness. May we serve you not only with our financial commitment, but with our lives as we work to love God and love others each day. Amen. to the world knowing that God goes with you knowing that your path might be rocky it might be thorny or it might be good soil whatever your path is know that God is with you know that you will learn and deepen whatever the path this week might lead to and also go out thinking about how you help others in their path. 
how maybe you are present when someone's going through a rocky time or a time where they feel strangled by thorns. And maybe you are that person to encourage or speak up for those who have no voice. So go out, look for ways to serve God, and look for ways that God encourages you and blesses you. And as you do, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the encouragement, the protection, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, and the grace and mercy of Almighty God, Creator of all things, go with you now and forevermore. Amen.